Hello everyone, today we're going to be thinking about how employment structures change around the world. Up to this point we've been thinking about the different types of jobs people work in, the different employment sectors they, they work in. We've looked at primary industry where they're digging materials out of the ground. We've looked at the secondary industry where people manufacture things make things, bakers, builders, car manufacturers. And then we've looked at the tertiary industry where people then will fix things or provide a service to people. The final sector we looked at was the quaternary industry. Remember that is a very small sector, the quaternary industry. People are very specialized, very intelligent, and that's all about researching and finding new products. Okay, so the people who are searching for the cure to the coronavirus okay, are working in medical research, finding a new vaccine for that. But today we're just going to think about how these sectors change in different countries around the world because it can have a big impact depending on the development of your country, how many people work in each sector. Okay, the learning objectives for today going to learn that hopefully LEDC countries have a higher proportion of primary industries in their economic sector. Might not be the largest but they've got a much more people working in primary industries such as agriculture in their country. Second learning objective is MEDCs will have a high proportion of tertiary industry compared to other countries. So most people working in the service industry. And then the third area that you might find is that countries in the process of developing from LEDCs to MEDCs, we call those often newly industrialized countries, have a large number of secondary industries, a lot of people working in manufacturing industry. That's true um, in Southeast Asia. So your first question on slide three that I'd like you to do is it says economic sectors can determine how developed a country is. And then your task is, what does MEDC stand for? And the second one, what does LEDC stand for? Now write your answer in on the slide. However, if you don't know, do a quick Google search and see if you can find the answer. Slide four then has the key learning point for this term, for this lesson. Now countries change from being an LEDC to an MEDC as they develop their industry. So most LEDCs, when they start off at the bottom end, tend to be lots of people who are working in subsistence farming. That means they farm for themselves and their family. They grow crops for them to eat. They may develop a little bit further and be able to grow more crops and then be able to sell those crops to other people and that helps them to bring in some sort of income. But largely developing countries have a huge primary industry that is mostly agriculture. As a country develops and it gets more money, more development, tend to see this growth of secondary industry. Now in the UK that happened around about the Industrial Revolution when we began to develop machines and machinery to make manufacturing and making products easier. So we grew this huge industry in the secondary industry. Now today, most of our secondary industry happens in Southeast Asia because in Southeast Asia, labor is cheap. And those countries there are developing from LEDCs to MEDCs. So as technology increases, more people will then work in secondary industry. Again, as we then head into the third sector, the tertiary industry, those machines might start to break down and we need people to repair them. We might need people to insure them. We might need people to provide money so that they can buy machines. We develop this tertiary industry, provide services. We might need to provide education to people to use the machines and so forth and so society develops and more and more people develop roles in the tertiary industry. But what you find is now generally the more developed the country the more um, tertiary industry you find in that country. So that brings us to the main task for today. 
I've provided on this slide a list of LEDC countries and these are the least developed countries in the world okay and I just want you to think on this slide which continents do these countries come from have a look at the list if you're not sure maybe you want to drop them into Google and have a little look and see There's some big clues on the screen as well now as far as they're the LEDCs now the MEDCs I've taken a list here from the Human Development Index and that sort of lists the development of each country and as you can see there is a list of the top developed countries in the world and you might want to have a little look through those and think about what um, continents they come from. Now this is the main task. What I'd like you to do is look at the list of the LEDCs and the MEDCs on the previous slides. I'd like you to choose three countries from this slide and three countries from this slide. I would then like you to go to the CIA Factbook. The link is here. You open the Factbook in your window and what you're going to do is you're going to complete the table that is on the next slide. So here's the table. You're gonna, there's your three LADC countries. You're going to choose your country. Now I'll do an example for you. I'm going to do Ghana. Okay. So I'm going to go to the fact book, I'm going to select at the top here, I'm going to go down and find Ghana, and what I'm looking for is a number of people that work in the primary, the secondary and the tertiary. So I've selected Ghana, and then I go down and select economy, and the economy tab opens, and then I'll need to scroll down quite a way. And what I'm looking for is this GDP composition by sector of origin. This one here. And it says agriculture, industry and services. And this gives the percentage of people working in each of those areas. So agriculture is primary industry, industry is secondary industry, and services is tertiary industry. So I want you to write down the percentages um, into the table. So, I've got 18.3% there in primary. I've got 24.5 in secondary. And then I've got 57.2 in tertiary services. I then want you to go through each country and add them in. So you've got six countries, three LEDCs and three MEDCs. Once you've completed that, there are some questions on the next slide. And they are asking you just to reflect back on what you've just done. So which country had the highest number of people working in the primary industry? You can write the answer in there. Which country had the highest number of people working in the secondary industry? Answer in there. What difference do you notice between the work people do in MEDCs compared to LEDCs? Okay. Have a little, and then that one is more of a written answer that you can jot into there. Okay, so hopefully you've learned that today LEDC countries have a higher proportion of primary industries in their economic structure. MEDC countries have a higher proportion of tertiary industries, service industries in their economic structure. And then the third one is that we get this idea where countries that are in the process of developing from being LEDCs to MEDCs, and we call them NICs, newly industrialized countries, they can have a large number of secondary industries, mostly because... Now, after that, the last thing that you can look at, if you're feeling really confident, I've put a higher order thinking school question here, and you can have a little go at that. How do countries develop from being LEDCs to MEDCs? You might want to do a bit of revision, a bit of work, a bit of research to answer that question. Okay, but develop a 10 mark answer. 
and um, we've provided the Kalark and Fisher model there to help you think about that as well how these countries develop in primary, secondary, tertiary, thinking through pre-industrial, industrial and post-industrial times. Okay, and you can write an extended answer in there. Okay, hope you have a good day.